Hey there, 8-Bit Dave here, and I was just having some cheese and some drinks tonight and uh, hanging out with the missus, and I kind of felt like making a quick crypto video, and that was her right there, as you saw on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi. Hi! <laughs> Anyways, we'll leave that in for fun. Uh, <clears throat> so, I wanted to make a quick video about a crypto that I've been following since before launch and I've been really excited about it and I still am and I'm going to tell you why and anyways that's uh, Hex. So I made a video about it a long time ago if you look way back in the channel I don't make a lot of videos but it's one of those things uh, it's kind of uh, expressed as an opportunity of a lifetime and honestly it is and uh, very excited. So uh, this video is going to probably get posted a day or two late because I'm out in the country and I don't really have internet access here and so on and so forth. But we did uh, look it up and the current price of Hex is about 50 BTC, or uh, not BTC, uh, 50 sats, sorry. And uh, it was as high as like 106, 107. And it's come down from its all-time highs. There's like a lot of FOMO kind of going into the... Uh, Big Payday, which is coming up soon. And if you don't know what any of this jargon is, I'm going to leave a link, if you're interested, in the description below. It's uh, hex.win or hex.com. And you can go check it out and learn about it. Uh, so the idea of Hex is essentially, uh, I guess I would call it like cold staking. And by cold staking, I mean you don't have to run an active node to stake in the network. So it's kind of like NEO, where just by holding the token, uh, you get a reward, in essence. Uh, Hex pays holders rather than paying miners. And uh, so for most of you, this is review, so I'm going to dispense from that and just kind of move on to the uh, meat of the matter, as it were. So what's been going on is there was a really high peak. And then Hex is dropping. There's been a little bit of FUD that came out recently. I watched a video on YouTube and uh, from a former Hexican. And he kind of pointed out, well, you know, in the uh, Uniswap, which is where most people trade, there's whatever, 10,000 ETH. And in the next little while, there's billions of coins coming due right now. There's roughly, say, 390 million hex to 10,000 ETH or whatever the case is, somewhere in along that line. And then when these billions of hex come due, well, the price is kind of going to go to zero, right? And uh, I don't feel that way. And I guess the reason why I don't feel that way kind of starts off at the beginning of my hex journey. So I'm one of those guys that uh, fumbled in on day one. You know, I did my free claim and then I bought some Hex day one, day two, day three. And I paid at that point, which was a premium. And the price kind of went down like a hockey stick. Not the happy hockey stick, but it went down. And, you know, at the time I thought, well, I still believe in the idea of the project. And that, you know, this idea, which was new at the time. Uh, that you have a crypto that rewards the holders rather than miners. And so I still kept occasionally throwing some in, just a little bit of ETH here and there. And we're talking small amounts. But those small amounts actually paid off quite large. So it turns out some of the days where I did put my ETH in to the adoption amplifier was actually at the very bottom. I... I put ETH in like six days before the bottom and three days after. So I bought at prices so low that I don't even care anymore. No matter what happens, I actually already have 100% capital return. I kind of made the mistake of selling a little bit too early. So if you look back at the hex chart, it starts off. You know, high drops down after the initial few days where everybody was excited about the project and bought early. And then it drops down almost to nothingness. And then it kind of went up for a little bit. 
and I sold enough then that I got all my initial capital back. And then I held the rest and decided to do laddered staking and all of this. And there's lots of videos on these strategies. And so I've just kind of become a believer in the idea of it. And in fact, recently, a little while back, if you check my Twitter, I bought in again. So I'm one of those guys that like sold too early and then buys back in. And uh, I actually did okay on that too, believe it or not, I'm still ahead. So what I'd done was I found my paper Bitcoin wallet, emptied it, bought Hex, wrote it up a little bit, got my initial Bitcoin back. So now all the Hex that I hold that's left over I held and I have staked it going out. Now I have stakes for the full 15 years, which is exciting. So that was kind of my strategy there. So on the short term, I'm not really worried about price. And I'll tell you why. So years ago, I used to invest in stocks. I bought a lot of stocks when I was younger. As soon as I turned 18, I'd applied for an online trading account back when nobody had it. This was in the late 90s. They didn't even want to give me one. The bank that I had applied to here in Canada, they were concerned that if they let an 18 year old trade that they would get lawsuits and somebody called me from their head office and they actually quizzed me over the phone and, you know, test my knowledge about trading. And I promised them that I'd never sue them even if I lost money, which I kind of did lose some money trading stocks. So I do have some regrets with that period of my life. And that's what gets me excited about Hex. It's, you know what, you get your interest, it's paid to you by the smart contract. Nobody can cheat you out of it. You mint the interest yourself. You're not relying on any third party to give it to you. And when I look at this and the whole idea of the project, it reminds me to a book I once read, which was written by Jim Craner. Everybody knows that guy, the guy who's bye, 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 sell, 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 you know? I'm sure you've all seen CNBC, but he had an investing philosophy in this book. And uh, it kind of went, if you're going to invest in something, you want to invest in the best of breed. And that stuck with me from that book from when I was young. So when you look at crypto, we have best of breeds in crypto. So for example, Bitcoin's the original. You see it high up there, it's just dominating the market cap, always somewhere between 40 and 75% dominance. It's the best of breed of all crypto, the bluest chip crypto there is. It's not saying much because crypto does drop like a stone. However, it's the best of breed for just straight up pure crypto play. And then you look, you know, that's not the only thing you can do in crypto. They're smart contracts. Well, who's best to breed in smart contracts? It ain't Tron. Unfortunately, it's Ethereum. Ethereum's best to breed. So if you're interested in smart contracts, you want to be where Ethereum is. That's where the money is. And then you look masternodes. You know, I remember a couple of years ago, there was masternodes everywhere. And you start looking, what well, would you rather have Dash? a dash master node or would you rather have a dash green master node well a dash green master node chart looks like that the dash chart goes down but you know it's holding some value so whatever new thing comes out you want to be in the best of breed and it tends to be in this space in all honesty it boils down to whoever came out with it first ethereum was doing smart contracts first you know, you could argue a little bit about Next, but, you know, essentially it was Ethereum. They were the first there doing something, the first where anybody could participate, the first where it was open, and they became best of breed in that space and where all the excitement is. And everybody's trying to make the Ethereum killer, but hey, I ain't seen it happening. So same thing, Bitcoin. How many payment network coins are there? Wow, you got Bitcoin, you got Ripple, you got this, you got that, you got uh, Bitcoin Cash, and 
you know, all these things are doing awesome things. Honestly, Bitcoin Cash probably does a lot of things better than Bitcoin, but still the excitement is in the best of breed in the original Bitcoin. That's where all the action is. And you want to look at masternodes again. Hey, well, if you're looking at masternodes, it's Dash. The first mover advantage. They've become best of breed. If you wanted to own a masternode, if somebody called me and said, Dave, I want to buy a masternode. I don't know nothing about crypto, but I really want one. I would say, well, have you considered Hex? Then after that, I'd say, if you really want this masternode, you want the best. You want Dash. So one thing I've noticed with the trustless staking, there seems to be a lot of projects coming out now that are essentially copying the idea of Hex. And I just keep hearing in my head ringing best of breed. So here we have the first project to do this. I mean, you could say uh, Neo had cold staking before, but it's not the same. With Neo, you just hold it and it mints gas tokens and there's no really game theory behind it other than you just hold it. You don't know when people are gonna sell their Neo or whatever. You can't look into the future like Hex where you could see when somebody is able to sell huge amounts or if somebody does dump on your head, you get this awesome bonus for being a staker where when they emergency unstake, you know, some of that capital gets taken away from them and given to those who stuck to their word. And seeing all these other little projects pop up everywhere, unaudited, some of them are, I still think... You know, you want to go with whoever did it first. Because whoever did it first tends to have the larger community. Uh, they got the most resources behind it, the most experience behind it in the area. And so I am sticking with Hex. You know, it doesn't stop me from looking at other projects. You know, I like to see what's on the menu when I go to the restaurant. But I know I'm getting the steak, right? Richard Hart! <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, you can tell the, uh, the girlfriend's a fan. And uh, <clears throat> mo moving on, so I feel Hex is best of breed. Now let's look at the price. And you know what I'd alluded to earlier about how billions of Hex are coming unstaked in the next little while after the big payday and even some of mine. Well, during this run up, let's be honest. I sold a bunch and I had a profit and it's ETH and it's sitting there doing nothing for me. So my personal strategy going forward is if there is a dump, I'm going to be buying. And the comments made about Hex were, well, there's all these people that could be potentially dumping and selling and, you know, who's going to buy? Well, it's like Bitcoin. You know, I, re I discovered Bitcoin in 2012 and I didn't buy it because I had the same concerns. When I discovered Bitcoin, you know, the first thing I learned was there was this Satoshi dude who had like at that point, like 50% of the supply. And I was scared to get involved. You know, I downloaded the wallet. I installed it. I still have it on a Windows uh, XP hard drive sitting there. My old wallet with zero coins in it, zero balance. I was chicken to pull the trigger because I was scared while well, there's this mystery uh, wallet that holds the biggest portion of the supply and they're going to come just, they're waiting for us to uh, build up a community and then just dump on our head when they can get rich. And it never happened. And, you know, it could be because Satoshi's passed away and gone or, you know, if Satoshi's alive, obviously... Why would you destroy something that you worked hard to build? Doesn't really make sense, does it? So, you know, I ended up getting into Bitcoin in 2014 because it took me two years of watching. And then when I saw Hex and, you know, I heard the same things. Oh, there's this origin address and it has a huge supply and it could dump all over you. Well, you know what? I missed out big time. I missed out huge. I could have had life-changing results had I not been so chicken in 2012. But I was scared. I was scared of getting dumped on. 
And uh, this time I wasn't scared of getting dumped on. You know, I looked at the project. I looked at the people involved. I looked at the math behind it. And speaking of the math, so as of today, right now, and again, this video is going to get uploaded uh, a couple days late here, but uh, it's trading at roughly 50 sats, which is uh, 0 0.007 of uh, a dollar, so seven tenths of a cent. And, you know, at its all time high, it was uh, about a cent and a half. So it's already had a a decent drop of 50%. But you know what? In order for it to drop to the point where I initially got involved in Hex, those very low lows, it would have to drop, and I already did this math, 99.6% from its all-time high. I don't, I've never really seen a crypto do that, honestly. I've seen lots of drops, but none that steep. So I'm sticking with it. And just like when a lot of people, when I used to tell them, oh, I'm going to get involved in this Bitcoin thing, and everybody told me you're going to lose your gitch, and what if it goes to zero? What money in this world has actually gone to zero? Really, I can't think of any. I got a coin from the Roman Empire. It's worth a lot more than zero, even though they don't exist. I got uh, that Japanese money that they printed when they planned on successfully taking over the United States. It says the Japanese government par uh, promises to pay the bearer on demand $10. Well, apparently that went to zero, but it seems to be worth a lot more than zero when I take it to the pawn shop. And if Bitcoin dropped to a penny, I'd be there buying them all. And if Hex drops to its previous lows, where it was at the very friggin' bottom, guess who's going to be there buying them all? This guy right here. And... I think that's part of a good strategy. So I've completed the first half of the staking ladder that I want. I have stakes coming out every year. I'd like to get a little more detail, kind of like uh, what Hexologist was talking about, where you have stakes that are coming undone every month and you can restake and sell the interest. So I guess my goal is, uh, my next goal is I want to have a thousand T shares that are coming due uh, every year and then up for restake. So, you know, it might be a bit ambitious, but you're looking at a decent income, even if Hex is just sitting at its lows. And the truth is when all these stakes come undue on different days at different times, you can't look at that Uniswap figure, the nine or 10,000 ETH, or, you know, that hex that's sitting there, the 390 million or whatever, as a static figure, it fluctuates. And there's always new ETH coming in, and there's ETH coming out, and there's hex going in, and hex coming out. So when you look at that, it's not that there's 10,000 ETH for the whole hex community. Like, really, look at Bitcoin. If we were to sell all 18 million Bitcoin that exist onto the market right this second. Well, of course it would go down to nothing. It would go to near zero, but that's not how it works because nobody's selling all at once. It's just not how it happens. There's always people going in and you know, right now we're looking at a price in Uniswap where there's very little liquidity. Why is there very little liquidity? I used to be a liquidity provider. Guess what? You know, I in the last few months, I seen the big payday coming. I wanted to participate in it. I pulled out 99% of my liquidity. I just leave a little bit in there because part of me is still a trader and I like to have something to do when I come home. So if you're one of those guys that spent your life trading and all you want to do is trade, you know, there's a better way and it's just become a liquidity provider. You can come home after work or when you're at work or whatever. And, you know, you got something to look at, you know, you can see. And you can't really lose. Like, I know some people say being a liquidity provider, you can lose. With Hex, being a liquidity provider with the Hex uh, ETH pair, I don't see how you can lose. Because 
X being built on Ethereum, you need Ethereum to transact in it. So for unstaking, staking, doing things. So when the price changes, I get more ETH. Well, great. I love ETH. Oh, the hex is going down. I check my numbers after work. I have way more hex. Great. I love hex. I can take some out and stake it. So it's... To me, it's like a win-win. And if you were addicted to trading and you wanted to sit in front of a screen all night or all day or whatever, whenever you did that, I would say the best thing to do is just become a liquidity provider. And, uh, you know, you'll have something to look at every day. You'll have charts and numbers. So, you know, it'll give you something to do like a smoker, hey, that needs to be fidgeting with something uh when they give up smoking because you know it's like a habit eh? you know you you feel like you got to sit in front of a screen and and check something so that's kind of my thoughts i i don't see hex going to zero um there is liquidity there my personal plan is is to get involved again in uniswap and add more to the liquidity pool i have eth sitting on the side personally i'm gonna wait till after big payday and I do, there you go. <laughs> I, uh, I will be uh, buying some more Hex and uh, entering the liquidity pool again. Another side note, I was the founder of a liquidity pool on a side chain. Uh, it's the XDAI stake. And you can look that up. There's a bridge that bridges from Ethereum. And I started... The liquidity pool there's a clone of uniswap called honey swap and i just thought you know let's take hex and bring it to a, the sister chain of ethereum and that's part of the thing i love about the hex community is even though the code's finished it's not a st stagnant community right so there's always new things to learn and new things to do and we'll move on with crypto as time goes on so i never used uniswap and then when I got into Hex, I was like, oh, well, everybody seems to be trading with the Uniswap. At first, I was using Bydesk. And then as soon as you go to withdraw, they need your photo and all this. And I don't know, it's just irritating. So I was like, I'm going to try this Uniswap. And I tried it. It was awesome. I loved it. I started using Uniswap for everything, especially since I uh, pretty much lost a huge chunk of my crypto back in the days of Cripsy, and I lost some again with Cryptopia. I'm just one of those guys that never learned to hold their own private keys, I guess. And I was like, wow, here's a way that I can like do things and use this Uniswap and be involved in this community and I can still trade or uh, add liquidity or do whatever. And then all of a sudden you get this giant uh, reward. Hey, I remember uh, when I was there with uh, uh, Melissa, and we had uh, gotten the Uniswap money. Of course, some, you know, I used to buy some hex right away and kind of complete some further out stakes. Initially, I was never going to stake anything past five years, to tell you the truth. But now I'm out for the full 15. And uh, so I finished my stakes and I took some and I bought her a whole pile of clothes online from AliExpress. That's not a, a plug, though, but that's how it went down. And I uh, used that to pay for the clothes. So, you know, I got involved in this one little area. I learned something new. And then I'm learning about uh, ZK optimistic roll-ups. And then now, to come full circle to the XDI sidechain, you know, I'm learning about that. How to use a token bridge, which there is third-party liability. If the bridge falls down, you can't get your tokens back. But that being said, you know, it's still interesting, experiment in small amounts and uh, just keep learning about crypto. And honestly, I love the whole ecosystem, the community. And you know what? If Hex drops down to near zero, I promise you guys I'm going to be out there buying them all. So don't worry about that. And uh, yeah, so that's just my thoughts. There's been so much excitement and so much going on. And I just, uh, I've been watching everybody else uh, make videos and talk about it and posting about it on Twitter. And I just wanted to throw in my two cents for what it's worth. And thank you all for watching and hope you have a good night. Melissa, do you want to say hi to the camera?
Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>